Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Overwatch Watchpoint Gibraltar set. And players of the game will readily recognize that this is based off one of the scenes from the map in-game of the same name. This is the largest of the minifig scaled, sort of minifig scaled, uh, sets that they've released, at least up to this point. Comes with four figures in total, including a big fig of Winston, and let's get a closer look. Down here at the base is the drone charge station that is the final checkpoint in the payload escort mission that's played on this map. This is a printed large dish piece, and that same piece is also made available in the Tracer vs. Widowmaker, much, much smaller set, sold separately, which comes with the drone that's intended to be, I was going to say, driven up to this, hovered up to this, and it would just get connected to the base with a little 2x2 uh, two two clear brick underneath that makes it look like it's just above the ground. This is also able to integrate with the main rocket, but we'll get to that a little bit later on. This has the full launch platform, which is pretty sizable and looks pretty good. One sticker there, they're using the roller coaster pieces in the red color. And this just looks really good. You know, there's plenty of space to put a minifigure up there. These roller coaster pieces do have bar sized rails, which means that you can attach figures at any point along those, like so just snaps right on like that. So that's actually very convenient. You can use it as a ladder. You can use it for opposing figures that are in flight. And also some of these smaller bars that are the cross members can be used to hold on to figures. That's not the best example right there, but you know these are also spots where you can make connections. And if you want to add on some other items that have clips, you know, you can start to build things out from there. So you have plenty of possibilities for for display with this and for play. You've got the small platform up above. It's not all that much you can do there. You can have a figure, you know, standing up here <laughs> doing the uh, doing the overwatch thing, <laughs> watching over the map, but you can't really walk on this part of the platform here. It's just not not very stable. They have a couple of spots where you can remove some pieces, do a little bit of modification. You can actually get a figure to hold on or their feet to get stuck into that. It's just intended to represent the little gangway for transfer over to the main cockpit of the rocket. Before I get to the rocket itself, which is the main thing that I want to focus on, I just want to make sure that you see what this looks like from all different angles. So this does not have the the coaster rails along the back they just use these plates but it's not such a bad thing and it's sturdy enough and built well enough i think and the entire rocket is able to just sit there it's it's not attached with any studs or anything it's very convenient to get it to actually launch and there's a little bit of detail around just to keep things interesting the so-called rocket is like a vertical launching space plane. It's very sleek. I think that the shape is pretty well captured here in Lego form. The cockpit up front is able to just accommodate one single figure. And yeah, they've got just a control yoke there. This next section opens up just a little bit to give you some ordnance there that can be fired out. That's actually on a, a ball joint, so you can bring this out and turn it around and face it in different directions for defense, I suppose. This is like a second cockpit right here. Figures have to stand in there. Got a small console. It's just a printed piece down below. And then you have the main cargo area in the back. Now, on top of this is where you can place the small drone. You can connect it. It's supposed to be a, a charge port up there. You can just connect this directly however you want. And I mean, that looks good. It, it almost looks like it was designed to go there. Like these two were designed to go together. Well, indeed they were. So that's, that's all good. You could also leave a spacer between there if you want to leave the two by two uh, clear brick. Let's use as a stand between the two. I think it looks better just to keep them all together. Again, that drone, that separate, craft is sold separately so it's not included in this i just wanted to show how those go together got your engines back here some small winglets or stabilizers you can change the angles of these if you want to i don't know why you'd want to maybe just to change the look of it 
a little bit. I guess that's not bad. Not bad. But all of this back here is intended to open up. You can open the top like so, and then the sides also open out. This cargo area is very empty by default, and they don't really give you much to put in there at all. The most important things are the banana and peanut butter for Winston. They mention, Lego does, in their description that this is a large enough area to actually carry Winston. But to make that happen, you need to remove his pack and lay him down. I think I can get that to work like that without removing his weapon. And there we go. Does that quite... No, it doesn't quite work yet. Need to get that need to get that foot down a little bit farther. Come on, get get down there. <laughs> so it's 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 not like it really accommodates him properly. You know, he can stand up with everything open, but I think if I remove this weapon then it's going to work out. It's just not the best accommodation. And that's just a limitation. There we go. That's just a limitation of physics, you know. The size of the thing is limited and there's only so much you can do with something this large so at least you can transport him in there it's plenty good for kids but it would have been nicer if there was some ability to get him to actually sit down and you know look like he was well not just being transported you know because he's actually supposed to go fly this thing off himself he's not able to fit in either of the control areas and that's perfectly understandable though this also has the ability to split into two separate craft with the front section being very sleek and looking somewhat believable. I could just imagine these having some flexible control surfaces on the back so you could actually do a re-entry with this part. Potentially has a single engine on the back right there. You know, so you can send one person off in this and that leaves you with this also with a cockpit basically. Uh, this almost works for me. Almost. I like that. That's making sense to me. That's still looking cool, you know, as just a an alternate form. You know, I don't expect this to be super sleek when you've broken half of it apart. Got a couple weapons up front as well. Those don't physically shoot, but the look is good. And then at the front, it just kind of falls apart, if you ask me. It just gets very super blocky, and then having that Technic pin sticking out there is kind of weird kind of awkward a little bit of modification though i think would make this look pretty nice uh, would have been nice if they had actually included one other just small sub assembly that you could clip onto the front of this to give it a nose that should be an easy thing for for people who have some extra pieces to do i strongly recommend it and you can just store that back here Taking a moment to look at Winston by himself. He's what we call a Lego big fig and follows most of the conventions of modern big figs, which haven't changed all that much. Over time, articulation is very minimal. You get arms that go up and down. You can also rotate these hands and they have a section on them that is able to hold on to, for instance, the leg of a person. So you can grab a person and kind of toss them around. I think that's Overall, the figure looks pretty good. The face is a little bit flat to me. Uh, I feel like the nose makes him look a little bit more humanoid than he ought to. He should look a little bit more gorilla-ish, just my opinion. But overall, the figure looks pretty good because the color scheme is is carried through well, and doesn't it, the whole thing doesn't suffer from the usual, in my opinion, the, the usual issue of these looking fairly plain. This looks pretty proper to me. He's got his Tesla Cannon there, which does use four stickers for a fairly small piece, or a small sub-assembly. And then he's got his Jump Jet Pack on the back, which is a nice build. It's simple enough, but it definitely does the trick. I think it looks pretty good, looks pretty proper, and was enjoyable to put, you know, to put together. And of course you can leave that off if you want to. There's nothing else that you can do with these figures though in terms of posing them. You can't turn the head and you can't do anything with the legs. They're just always there just like that. So it's just a matter of arms up and down and that's just about it. In contrast, here's one of the regular minifigures. This is Farah, and I think this looks really, really good. 
reuses a Nexo Knights armor piece and it's colored nicely. It's dual molded so you can see a little bit of transparency with the trans blue colored plastic that's attached in there. Looks really good. And she's got her jump jet pieces on the back as well. Those can be posed in different ways. You can angle them in and out because of the way that they're set up and also up and down. You might be able to make them look a little bit better than I've set them up right here, but that's the, the basic idea. New helmet piece just for her. Stud shooter is set up to fire off something a little bit, a little bit larger than a standard stud, you know, a little bit more substantial, but still just works the normal way. I think this is a very good looking figure and there's more to be seen that's hidden most of the time. There's the rest of the torso print, which does look excellent to me. I also really appreciate just how bright the silver is on the leg print there. Really, really stands out. A good print for the face. It's unique. And there's the alternate face, also very expressive. There's a lot of print on the back of the torso that normally you don't see, because that's usually just kind of hidden away and covered up. Good stuff. Here is Reaper, and his customized kind of brick-built weapons there are supposed to be shotguns, his own special ones. They're built off the new blaster piece here done in dark gray, new for 2019. The print on the face is not quite right. Uh, wow, it really reminds me of uh, Garrus from uh, Mass Effect, the way it's done right now, because it actually has a little extra texture that's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be much more clean looking than that, but I think that the overall effect of this figure is very nice. I feel like a lot of people will probably use this as a as a base too for additional customization maybe bring in a different set of legs to get a little bit of print in there you know it's too bad there's there's absolutely nothing down there but it's not that bad uh the cape i believe is a new shape for this year and there is no alternate face to be seen on this one which is okay because he really doesn't need any well look at that back torso print another thing that most of the time you just don't see and it looks pretty good, but there's more still that you can do with this figure. Alternate leg piece included to put him into his wraith mode. That's absolutely perfect for Lego. You know, it, it's obviously the right piece, and it's wonderful that they included that as an alternate. I love it when Lego includes, you know, just one extra piece that can make such a difference. You know, it's great to have both options in one set rather than having to... You know, get one version of Reaper in one set and another version in another just to get both of those options. Yeah, I, I really like that and I really appreciate it. And last up, here's Mercy. Look at that torso print there. That's a fantastic torso print. It looks really, really good. And they tried to get that print to continue straight through into the hips and down to the legs. It's not produced, at least the one that I got, is not produced all that well. You know, falls apart just a little bit with the sharpness, with the crispness, but definitely the intent is there. I can see what they were going for, and you know, if I had gotten a little bit more lucky, probably would have gotten it to look a little bit better than that. I like the hair piece there, which is a dual molded part. Of course, she has to have the wings, and that's just a, an established pattern for Lego already. The staff, I think, looks fine and appropriate for her. The print on the back of the torso is just about as good as the print on the front, which is fantastic. And here you get to see probably the better of her two absolutely horrible, disgusting, unacceptably terrible, terrible, terrible face prints. The design is fine, but, I mean, I don't really need to, to say anything much this is one of those wonderful cases where I can just say, look, Lego has done a terrible job on something and people won't come rushing to the defense of the Holy Lego because it's just too terribly obvious that this is terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, it just needs way more opacity. And I mean, you, I mean, just look at it. That's, that's not even knockoff quality. That's particularly poor flea market 
corner stall knockoff quality or lack thereof. Like I said, this this is probably the better looking of the two, which is a real shame. I don't need to harp on this very long because it's just obvious they just totally messed up on this. And they need to not do that. It's not the first time that they've done this or something like this, this badly, in in recent years. And it's not acceptable given that we pay, you know, good, solid, premium prices for a solid quality product from Lego. And here are the last few things, just a small health pack, which is a printed piece there for the the cylinder part, which is nice. It's not the best print, but it's not bad. I think it's more than good enough for, for what it is. And you get a couple extra projectiles for Farah's launcher. And while we're looking at really little stuff, here are the spare pieces, the leftovers, the true extras. So, you know, a fair little assortment of things, including some uncommon colors, but nothing too fancy. The fanciest thing included in the set part-wise, aside from the printed dish piece for the drone charging stand or port, or what do you call it, station, is this. It's a brick separator part in the teal color. Sweet. If you want to see the rest of the pieces put together to create this set, you can check out my speed build over on my speed build channel. And I will link to that from the end of the review here and also from the pinned comment. I've been experimenting a little bit with some different things to hopefully make it an interesting experience for you to watch. Overall, I feel like this is a pretty decent set. I'm happy with it. Uh, it just looks pretty good on display to me. I especially appreciate the care that went into the tower, you know. It, oftentimes they'll just make things like that really small these days and not very well detailed, but this is nice. In terms of value, I think that the price is okay. Of course I could ask for it to be priced lower, and I'm, I'm sure that these will be available for lower prices over time. The price to part ratio does not look great here on paper, but you do have to consider the fact that there is a big fig in this set, which always bumps up the price quite a bit. Those do cost quite a lot more to produce. It's not just a matter of the amount of plastic that goes into it, but the actual process for creation and also packaging. Uh, you also get these roller coaster track pieces, which are rather large and more expensive. That's a big printed piece. The volume of stuff that I get here, and looking at this on display, it, it looks like it's priced about normal, which is expensive. Lego is expensive, but I don't feel like it's a ripoff here at all. Uh, for anything except for the face for Mercy. If it looked like that, then that would be great. I actually saw a lot of people when I first bought this set, I think it was in the haul video where I showed all the sets that, that I had gotten, uh, I saw a lot of people saying, please, you know, say bad things about Mercy's face print. And I looked at pic I looked at the pictures on the box, I looked at the pictures online, the official pictures, and I'm like, well, it doesn't look that bad to me. I mean, I guess there's some subje subjective things you could ask about, you know, how the eyes are done or the the black outline or something. And then I saw it in person, like, ah, I get it. I get it, you guys. But, yeah, that's the look. That's <laughs> very major low point of the set. Everything else I think is pretty good. The The rocket itself is not overwhelming. Uh, I hesitate to say underwhelming. I guess the interior is a little bit underwhelming to me, but the shape of it is really nice. It looks so smooth in person. Uh, I think it actually looks really cool. So, yeah, I'm happy with the set overall. Hope you enjoyed this review. Whether you like the set or not, feel free to leave a comment down below. Check out the speed build if you'd like to. I'll talk to you again soon.